Good afternoon. Welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Emily Wagner and I am a school counselor for grades 10 through 12 in the South Williamsport Area School District. Today I'm going to discuss how to prepare for a job interview. I've been both an interviewer and an interviewee for well over 50 job titles in various industries. It is my hope that after this lesson, you will be able to apply the information discussed to future job interviews, whether you are seeking part-time summer work or your first full-time position after high school graduation. So, to set the scene, you've updated your resume, searched for jobs, applied to dozens of positions, if not more, and finally, you've heard from a company that wants to interview you. Congratulations, the hard work is done. Just kidding. That sense of relief you feel quickly diminishes as the panic sets in of having to now go through with an interview. Don't worry, over the next 20 minutes or so, you will learn many ways to be as prepared as possible so you get the job you deserve. Let's get started. As you can see, there are five essential elements to preparing for a job interview. Before you answer that phone or respond to an email, here are some tips for the first element, scheduling. If given a choice when the interviews are being held, you want to be one of the first or last interviewers of the day, or if it's over the course of multiple days, the beginning or the end. Why, you may ask? Just like a list or a story, people tend to remember what's at the beginning and the end more so than what's in the middle. If you apply the same principle to interviewing, you want to stand out as much as possible and make a first or last impression. Another thing when scheduling is make sure you know the name of the person you are talking with on the phone or through email. Write it down and remember it from later. We'll talk about it in a little bit for one of the other elements. You also want to make sure that you ask these questions with the person who you're on the phone with. What's the address of the place that you'll be interviewing at? What type of interview are you going to have? Is it a group one? Is it just one on one? Who is the person you're going to be interviewing with? And what's their title? And then is there something that you need to plan for in the interview? For example, us educators, you know, typically have to present a lesson. Do you need to do something like that? Do you have to write an essay? Do you have to bring a product or something like that? Make sure you ask so that you can be well prepared. Make sure when you're on the phone as well that you confirm the date and time at the end of the phone call and the best number to reach the day of the interview if you should come into any trouble. And just some other things to consider as well is do you have reliable transportation to get there on time? Do you have to call off work? Those are things that you know you should plan ahead and have a list of what you should be asking and know your availability before you make that phone call. Those are all good things to note. Okay, number two, research. So research in general, when it comes to preparing for an interview is all about gathering the facts, getting the data, to build your knowledge and to really develop questions to ask in your interview. The first tip that I have is reviewing the company's website. How, when were they founded? What is their mission and vision? How many employees do they have? Who oversees the department that you're gonna be working in potentially? You know, are there other things such as the growth that they've shown as a company? You know, were, did they start small and now they've expanded? Do they have a new product that was just launched? You know, it'd be a good idea to, to know that to talk about. What is their social media presence? You know, are they on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? Are they just a website based? You know, what are the comments that people say about the company, the consumers and everything? All good stuff to help in gathering that information. Another thing that would be advisable to do is check out the LinkedIn profile of the person you're gonna be interviewing with. It may be important to know that they have been at the company for 30 years or they have worked their way up throughout their time there or they've been working somewhere else. You know, what brought them to this company? That's a really good question to ask as well. 
Another recommendation when you're doing your research is talk to current employees that you may know who work there. Ask them what they think of the company and be honest that you know, you're applying for a job there and have an interview. And it's really interesting to hear other people's perspectives on what they think. So word of advice though, just because you know someone does not mean you should name drop them in your interview. I think in my opinion, it's, it's poor taste. Um, more than likely, the person that you talked to previously is going to bring up that you're interviewing for the position anyway, so they already know. You, know, you don't have to add that in there. Another piece of the research is definitely to look over the duties and responsibilities that were in the job application itself. How can you align those duties and responsibilities to your experiences? Make a personal connection to it. Look over your resume while you're at it. You know, it could have been a while since you've written it and you want to make sure that you're brushing up on the information that you put in it. so You can refer to that in the interview. Now, at this point, you know, research is something that you have to prepare questions for. So I'm not going to go super in depth this time about how to answer those most popular interview questions. There's so many resources online that you can use. Make sure that you practice answering them, though, out loud and with someone else. That can be part of your research. And those questions you can vary from what are your strengths and weaknesses to what are the um, was a time where you made a mistake to you know, just, just tell me something about yourself. That's most, most of the common ones. So moving on to element number three is your attire. I'm going to preface this by saying there is a great VIA learn at home video called Dressing to Impress on a Budget done by some of my fellow educators. So if you want more information than what I'm going to discuss about today, be sure to check them out. As a rule of thumb for an interview, it's you're inclined to dress a step above what normal work attire would be for the position. An example, say you are a laborer looking for a position um, as a construction worker. You would probably wear khakis to an interview because more than likely when you're on the work site, you're going to be wearing jeans. So that is one step above it. If you're entering the corporate world, uh, and typically I would recommend wearing a suit, um, men probably a tie as well, just because that is going to make you stand out in an environment where everyone else is dressing their normal everyday attire. Be sure to try that outfit on uh, a couple days before your interview to make sure that it fits. Also figure out if it needs to be cleaned. This is an important day for you, and you may be having back-to-back-to-back -back -back interviews. So you want an outfit that's going to look good for each and every one of them. Your shoes, make sure that they're closed-toed, and make sure that they're comfortable, too. Um, I, in my own experiences, I uh, was interviewing at a school and was wearing high heels. Now, this would be fine, I have no problem on any other day, but we decided to take the interview outside on a walk to take a tour of the campus. Um, let me tell you, my feet were killing me afterwards. So it's just one of those things that you learn after the fact of, okay, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Um, females, you know, no excessive makeup or perfume, um, guys' cologne, jewelry, distracting necklines, anything that's gonna take away from what you're saying in your, in you know, up here in your face. That leads me to another thing. Um, females, when you wear hair ties, it kind of doesn't look as professional as it could. So just make sure that you take that off before you go into your interview. Think about your layers. Um, if you're in an office building, typically they can be pretty chilly. Um, some may be warmer, but I think it would be important to dress appropriate no matter what the situation is. But also know that if you have a layer or two on, um, that if you take one off, what you're still wearing is appropriate. I um, have to share another story too. I was interviewing someone who decided that the room was really, really warm. And when they took off their cardigan, they had on sequin spaghetti straps. Um, so very unprofessional and just kind of distracted 
everyone in the room from what they were saying because there was just a lot of skin showing. So just a little fun tip there. Something else to keep in mind is you don't want to stand out too much with like bright bold colors or prints, but you also want to have those elements somewhere. So man, men, you know, when you wear a tie, keeping it in mind that, you know, maybe a red one would be good. If you have a print or a scarf or something for females, you know, keeping it subtle, but also so that you can stand out in a group interview when you have a lot of people in the room. Sometimes you're not really remembered by your name, but by what you wore. So it's important to stand out, but also be so in that sense. Okay, moving on to number four, the interview itself. Now this is sort of the preparation leading up to it as well. When you are going there, you want to make sure that you arrive about 10 minutes or so before the interview. You can be in the parking lot, you know, hours before that if you really wanted to, but if you show up to the office or to the building, whatever it may be, a little bit before 10 minutes, you may seem a little bit too eager if you're there too early. Um, there also may not be a seat available for you because there's other people who are interviewing before you that are there. Any later, and you may not have enough time to complete any paperwork that maybe is needed. If they didn't tell you this when they were on the phone with you, you know, it's just important to give yourself some time to complete that so that you can start your interview on time. Being prompt is something that employers look for. Account for traffic as well, any unexpected issues. And that's why I say you could be in the parking lot beforehand. I was interviewing once and locked my keys in the car right before the interview. And the only way I could get them was to call um, the police to open up my door. And luckily they were able to do it pretty quickly and I got to the interview on time, but that's because I had built in time beforehand. If I didn't, then it may have just not worked out as well. Once you're in the building um, and walking through it, greet anyone that you come in contact with. You know, it's from the maintenance worker cleaning the windows to the receptionist at the front desk. You really want to make sure that you're smiling, you're interacting, you're engaging. Those are all good things that you're able to show. If for some reason you remember the name of the person who you were on the phone with when you scheduled the interview the first time, and that person is the one that you're checking in with, be sure to mention that. Oh, I remember talking to you on the phone. Thank you so much for calling me. And you can start that little small talk. When um, our school was conducting interviews a little while ago and we had an, in, an occasion where the person coming in to interview met with our secretary first and our secretary came back afterwards and mentioned to us that they didn't have a very warm welcome um, from that person. You know, we didn't end up hiring them and you know, maybe that was because of the reason. So it's always important to talk to everyone and engage yourself with the people who are working in that environment. Um, you want to make sure that you have a, a small portfolio just to be able to stick in some loose paper, like a tablet, um, copies of your resume, samples of work, a pen or two. That's really all you really want to have with you. Leave all your non-essentials in the car or at home if you're taking public transportation. Large briefcases and purses, they're, they're just distracting, especially you have to pick it up every time you move to a new room. A big thing too, especially for um, this day and age, is do not bring your phone with you. If you have to, um, turn it off. That would be really um, distracting if it were to ring in, during an interview. Another thing to think about with the interview is if you are being walked back to a room by someone and they are, you know, taking you there, engage them in conversation. You know, ask them what they're doing this weekend or what their plans are, depending on, you know, what day of the week it is. Uh, how's the weather? I like your outfit or, or something like that. Just to kind of pass pleasantries. You know, the awkward silence can sometimes be a little intimidating. And you're meanwhile panicking because okay now it's really happening so you're in there you're in the room 
make sure that you shake hands pretty firmly, I will say, um, practice this beforehand too, and maybe we add that to the research section, but practice with someone about how you shake hands. And sometimes when I do this with my students, they can you know, have little baby handshakes or really aggressive firm ones. You wanna be somewhere in the middle. You know, you can feel it, but also, you know, it's not that you're not gonna break someone's hand. In today's day and age, when we're kind of social distancing, maybe it's a good idea to, to ask if it's okay if they shake your hands. You know, that may not be something that everyone's comfortable with now. And no matter how many people are in the room, make sure that you shake each of their hands. If there's other candidates in there, you don't have to do it for them, but say there's multiple people who are gonna be asking questions and interviewing you, it'd be good to make contact with all of them. Introduce yourself and remember their names. Making eye contact is a big thing as well. It shows confidence and assures that the interview you're paying attention to is, you know, you're giving them your fullest attention. And also knowing your audience. So like I said, in a group interview, you don't wanna monopolize the session. You don't wanna have to um, you know, take a back seat either. So you kind of wanna be a little bit in the middle is answer enough that you, know, the, you make an impress, impression, but not so much that you aren't letting other candidates talk. When you're sitting in a group interview too, make sure that you're either like a cross or diagonal, from the person asking the questions. It's just a little bit easier to make that eye contact for them to remember what you're wearing, what you said, rather than having to turn to someone who's sitting right next to you. Be authentic. I mean, it's really hard to do that in any situation, especially one that is nerve wracking, but you don't wanna have to refer to your notes that you've taken or anything like that just because you're, you're fumbling and don't wanna make eye contact with someone. Those, that would be a good thing to do. Another thing that can sometimes happen in an interview is they ask you a multi-part question. You know, that can happen. It's okay to take time, answer it as you feel, su feel sufficient. And if you forget part of it, follow up with them. So can you clarify, I forgot part of that question too. There may be some questions that are meant to stump you. With that in mind, you want to take a pause. It's okay to do that. The awkward silence in an interview is okay if you're going to answer appropriately. I'd rather you take that time than try to make sense of just blabbering and talking to avoid silence. And those are definitely some tips for, for the interview element of preparing for the job interview itself. The last part here is called the wrap up. And why I say that is because you're really finishing up the interview and then everything that comes afterwards with it. So as you're concluding the interview, you wanna make sure you have questions ready to ask um, from when you did your research. And at, at least two questions, I would say. You know, in your list, you maybe will have five or six, but the hope is that they answered some of them already. It is in poor taste to talk about salary at this point in the interview stage. If they bring it up, that's fine, but you should not be the one to ask those questions regarding the salary. One of those questions um, to be included should also be, what are the next steps in the hiring process? How will it be communicated if you are considered or if you're not considered? Um, are you going to find out that they've selected a different candidate? Those are all good things to ask. Make sure that, that as you're leaving, you shake hands with everyone again. Thank them for their, their time. If you remember their name, it'd be really nice to be able to say thank you so-and-so as you're shaking their hand. It just means that you know, you made a different connection with them than some other people and it helps you stand out. As you're walking out, if someone is going with you and you had a conversation beforehand, um, mention it to them again to say, okay, I hope you have a great weekend or good luck doing X, Y, Z, whatever it was they said. Same thing as when you were coming in, say goodbye to anyone that you come in contact with too. And then get to your car and take a breath.
I would encourage you to take a few minutes while you're in your car to write down some notes as to how you believe the interview went, um, what you thought you did well, maybe some things that you would change for the next time, questions they asked you that maybe you want to develop a better response. And this is how you get better at interviewing by practicing. You can do mock interviews all you want, and I encourage you to do that in your research phase of all of this, but nothing's like the real thing. I would encourage you to you know, keep trying if you know, your first interview is not as successful as you thought it would be. You'll get there, believe me. So the other things that I wanted to mention are, you know, this day and age, interviews aren't necessarily happening in person, just given our current situation. All of the elements that I've mentioned throughout today, you know, they still apply to Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, all those types of platforms for an interview. You know, you may not be able to shake hands with a person or arrive early, but you still do need to dress the part, you know. And some other things to note, if you are doing a virtual interview, have good internet uh, and a good connection. Um, make a nice background, you know, you don't wanna have distractions in that. If you can't do that, put a virtual background up and make sure that the other people in your household know that you're interviewing so they don't bother you at that time. If you are using a laptop or a phone, delete all the or other tabs that you may have open Anything that may make a noise during that time, make sure that you silence or just close out just because those things you don't want to distract you from. So, I mean, that's a wrap. That's what I've got for you. We've reviewed the five elements needed to be prepared for an interview. Uh, now it is your turn to put those elements to the test. Good luck and thank you for joining me on Learn at Home with VIA.